Hello all. Today we are going to discuss a very interesting topic because from many days I was getting this question from many of my subscribers and many of my, uh, you know, the people who are following me in GitHub. So the question is basically how do we determine that how many hidden layers and how many neurons in each hidden layer we should consider whenever we are creating an artificial neural network. Okay, or let it be any convolution neural network. How do we decide that? It is very difficult to decide, guys, because there's a lot of calculation that goes on with respect to each and every neuron, you know, that is basically connected in a multi-layer neural network, along with the different kind of activation functions that are basically getting, you know, applied on those particular neurons. So today I'm going to show you a very good technique, which is also called as hyperparameter optimization. And this specific hyperparameter optimization is with respect to deep learning. And with the help of hyperparameter optimization, I'll be actually deciding, we'll be deciding that how many hidden layers and neurons we should consider in a deep learning neural network. Okay, so make sure you watch this video till the end because this particular, uh, you know, video is very, very special to me because I have put out a lot of efforts into this in creating it. So to begin with, what I have is that I have a basically a very good uh, data set which is called as churn underscore modeling dot CSV. Uh, I'll just explain you about this particular data set. This particular data set has been downloaded from Kaggle. So initially, let us just import some of the important libraries like NumPy, Matplotlib, Pandas. And from apart from that, I'm also going to import from Keras. Okay, I'm using Keras uh, as the wrapper in the back end it is TensorFlow. Okay. So here I'm actually importing sequential, dense layer, activation functions, activation libraries, embedding libraries, flatten. Uh, apart from that, I'm also adding uh, activation functions like uh, ReLU and Sigmoid. Okay, so to begin with guys, uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to, first of all, you know, uh, read the data set, which is called as churnmodeling.csv. And this is my independent features from third column till the 13th column. I'll just explain you about that data set by just showing you the head part. Apart from that, my Y, is, which is my dependent feature, is basically having you know the 13th feature, which is my dependent feature. So let us just go ahead and see what the data set is all about. I have some data set. Uh, this particular data set is basically uh, of a bank, which was actually provided in some Kaggle competition. I've taken that. So I have some informations like uh, row number, customer ID, surname, credit score, uh, geography, gender, age, tenure, balance, number of product, has credit card, is active member, estimated salary and finally my column is uh, dependent feature is basically exited. So we need to determine whether the person is going to exit that particular bank in the future or not. That is what is a churn data set all about and this is with respect to a bank. So based on all this independent feature, we should determine whether the person is going to exit the bank or not. A uh, simple use case, uh, a very easy use case, you can also do with this with machine learning, but this specific is with respect to deep learning. You need to understand how many hidden layers we should do it how many number of neurons in each hidden layer we should consider, okay? So to begin with, what I'm going to do is that, first of all, uh, this is my data set that I've already read, okay? And the most important data set, I've also splitted the independent and dependent features. And I've also given you from which feature to which feature I have my all my dependent features. So here you can see that from my third column till the 13th column is basically my dependent feature. That basically means from this credit, uh, credit score till the estimated salary. An exited column is basically my uh, dependent feature. So I have that read up in the Y value itself. After that, I'm just going to perform some, uh, you know, uh, some type of dependent features. Now, uh, apart from that, what I'm going to do is that first step, you can see that from this all data set that I've taken, like from geography, gender, this looks like a categorical feature. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to apply encoding over here by with the help of sklearn and uh, if you have more than two categories, basically you need to apply one hot encoder. If you have one or only two categories, you basically have need to apply label encoder. So this particular, uh, you know, uh, all about uh, category encoding, the, you can also use pd.get underscore dummies. I have already done in all my previous videos and shown you different way. So these are some of the feature pre-processing that we'll be doing. We'll be encoding the categorical data. And after that, what we are going to do is that we are going to apply a uh, train test split you know, train test split to basically get our training data set and test data set. And then I'm going to apply the feature scaling. In feature scaling, I'm basically have a library called as standard scalar. And I'm basically using feature scaling to transform my data. Now you should again understand I've already created videos on feature scaling when we should apply feature scaling. In this scenario, I'm applying feature scaling because remember that 
whenever i need to uh, you know uh, find out the global minima in uh, artificial neural network right what does it, that basically indicates that uh, you know about optimization right uh, when 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 we are talking about global minima so you will be seeing that we will be uh, having some kind of curve which looks like this and we have to reach to this particular point okay and uh, you know that this particular value is basically defined by our theta value initially our theta will be here then it will go down then down and down and finally it will reach to this particular global minima and if we do feature scaling initially this theta value will be very very small if it is very very small it will help us to you know reach this global minima point very quickly so that is the reason why we are performing standard scalar over here and always remember in case of artificial neural network you should always prefer in applying uh, this kind of uh, standard scaling option you should try to uh, scale down your features to so that uh, uh, you, you know after you scale down those values it will be ranging between minus 1 to plus 1 or 0 to 1 it depends on the type of scaling that you are basically going to use so make sure you apply this standard scalar always because that will help you to get a low theta value and quickly it will help you to uh, get the global minima point you know by uh, applying different kind of iterations with respect to the epochs now <clears throat> after that now the main concern is that how many neural network how many layers you have to consider how many neurons I have to consider again guys i have just taken some examples over here what you can do is that you can stretch this examples also for different use cases and different scenarios but uh, the main thing is that you need to understand that i'm going to use a very good library i think none of you know of this particular library or many of them will not have that knowledge of this library which is called as keras.wrapper.skykitlearn I'm going to import something called as Keras classifier and this particular Keras classifier will help us to decide you know along with grid search CV along with grid search or randomized search you can use any of those uh, libraries like grid search CV or randomized search CV to find out the exact number of uh, hidden layers you, uh, will actually be very very good for your problem statement and the number of hidden neurons okay so I'm going to uh, import this Keras classifier and grid search CV and then I'm creating a very small method this method will actually create your artificial neural network okay ann uh, based on the parameters of the layer and the activation function that is basically getting created okay so this function will help you to create that and finally i'm going to add optimizer which is called as adam and this loss will be binary cross entropy because here i'm basically solving a binary classification problem if it is not binary you can either go with the uh, categorical cross entropy okay and the metrics I'm going to use it as accuracy. And here you can see that when I give layers, suppose if I give one layer, so in one layer, what I'm doing is that I'm running a for loop. So in one layer, I will just have one for loop. So I can write a condition if i is equal to zero, I'm going to add this dense layer along with the shape, and then I'm going to add the activation function that I'm providing in this particular activation variable. Else, it'll go on adding the dense layers unless and until, I mean, till the end of the number of layers that I have. And finally, I'm going to add my output layer, which will be my dense layer, to, which will be actually determining your output. Since I have a binary classification, I can just have one output to represent my output value. Okay. And finally, this particular Keras classifier, which I have imported, I'm going to initialize it over here, Keras classifier. And inside this, you have a parameter called as build function. And I'm going to just give the function name over here, which is my create model. Okay, and my verbose is equal to zero. This basically implements that uh, nothing will be getting displayed as the code will get executed. Now, this is my model. Here you can see that it is a Keras classifier. Now, the main thing is that I have to provide two parameters into this function. One is layers and one is activation function. Now, grid search CV will come into use because I'm going to give different kind of layers and different types of activation function. Automatically, grid search CV will just apply all the types of layers that I'm trying to give and finally which will be the best layer you will get the output of that okay so to begin with what I'm going to do I'm going to take considering as layers and first in the first layer this particular list that you see here I just have written 20 now this basically indicates that after your input layer after your input layer suppose this is my input layer after your input layer I will be having one hidden neuron because in this list I just have one value and in this particular hidden neuron, I have 20 hidden neurons. Okay, in this particular hidden layer, I have 20 hidden neurons like this. Okay, that is what this is basically representing. And as soon as this particular function is called, right, this function, uh, which I have actually told you, right, the function called as create model, right. 
what it will do is that it will create this particular neural network and finally it will add a dense neuron at the last. So this all will get connected and this will be your output. Now this is with respect to the first layer. In the second layer, I'm basically using two hidden neurons, two hidden layers, sorry, two hidden layers. In the first layer, I have 40 neurons. In the second layer, I have 20 neurons. And finally, with the help of this particular function, I have one dense neuron that is connected at the last. And in the third scenario, I have 45 neurons in the first hidden layer, 30 neurons in the second hidden layer, and 50 neurons in the third hidden layer. Okay, now you can again add different different layers in front of it, okay, and try to check it out. But here I've just given you an example that I'm adding, you know, three different parameters of, uh, you know, in the first case, I'm just adding one hidden layer. In the second case, I'm adding two hidden layers. In the third case, I'm adding three hidden layers with 45 neurons in the first layer, 30 neurons in the second and 15 neurons in the third. And after that, I'm also giving that activation function that I'm going to apply is basically sigmoid and ReLU, okay? And this param grid is the parameter that I'll be giving inside my grid search CV. I, I hope you know grid search CV because I've created many videos on grid search CV also, uh, which is a kind of hyperparameter optimization function, okay? So here I'm just going to create additional of layers and activation function, and I'm also specifying my batch size. What should be my batch size? So in the, in, in the first case, I'm specifying 128 as the batch size. In the second experiment, I'm actually providing 256 as my batch size. And finally, I'm providing my epochs. That 30 epochs, it will run. And it'll try to find out which layers is actually suitable. Whether uh, one hidden layer is suitable for my problem statement or two hidden layers is suitable for my problem statement or three hidden layers is basically suitable for my problem statement. Along with that, whether sigmoid is important or relu is basically important. Okay? So all these things. And finally, I'm running my grid search CV. Here, the estimator is basically my model that I've actually passed over here. And inside this, I'm passing all my param, which is my param grid, which I've actually created as additional. And finally, after doing all these things, I'll just do fit. It will take some time to run. You may get some warnings, but don't worry about the warnings. It will take some time. It will take around five minutes. Okay. Um, you just do it. Uh, if you want, you can also add one cross validation value like 10 over here. Okay. Cross validation value. You can just say five cross validation or 10 cross validation. And always remember as you increase the number of cross validation, more time it will take, okay? Uh, so after this, uh, you can find your best score. Your best score basically from this particular classifier is 83%. And your uh, best params, best params is basically your, uh, this is the parameter that it will be using. That basically means for each and every uh, layer, you'll be using a ReLU. The best side should be 256. How many epochs you'll be running is basically 30 and the layers basically that you'll be considering is 45, 30 and 15. That basically means from all the layers, from all the layers, this is the best layer that is getting selected. That basically means three hidden layers. With the first layer, you have 45 neurons in the second layer, 30 neurons in the third layer, 15 neurons. You can still increase and you can try to check for different parameters also and you can find the best parameter. And after this, what I'm going, I'm trying to predict my X-test data. And why pred? I'm comparing with the help of confusion matrix. You can see over here, I've just given grid dot predict x underscore test. I've got pred underscore y. I've just given a condition wherever pred underscore y is greater than 0.5, just make it as uh, you know, make it that as true. Otherwise, it will be remaining all will be false. Um, after that, I'm creating confusion matrix. I'm testing y test and y pred. You can see that this is my confusion matrix that gets displayed. If I want to see the accuracy of uh, the test score, you can use accuracy score. And here I'm giving Y test and Y pred. Finally, you can see for my test data, I'm somewhere getting around 80%. Now, this is the way, guys, how you can select the hidden layers and uh, how many neurons you can do. Again, the thing is that you can create, again, different different combinations in this particular hidden layers and you can just try with grid search CV. Uh, this is about grid search CV, guys. I would also like you all to please go and try with randomized search CV and see which is actually giving a better performance. Usually randomized search CV is much more faster than grid search CV, but I, I, I just give you this opportunity to please try out with randomized search CV. So I hope you like this particular videos, guys. Please do subscribe to the channel. If you have not already subscribed, make sure press the, uh, uh, I mean, press the uh, bell icon so that whenever I upload any video, you'll get the notification. I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day ahead. Keep on learning. Never give up. Uh, thank you one and all. God bless you all.